Hi, Britney Spears in my head. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I, that's how I thought it was going. <laughs> Welcome to a brand new episode of Snobcast. I am uh, one of your hosts, Johnny. The Lord I am of the snobs. I am the host with the, the least. Literally, Shut at this off. point, I'm the least. Oh, you? That's talking about me. That you're like throwing jabs. No, you're the host with the most. Yeah, and we have hype man Steve, who's the host, who's the I'm most. A, I'm a third Georgian. of a host. He's the most Georgian out of all of us. Georgian, like in the United States. No, no George, Georgian, like George of the Jungle. But no, uh, as in the proud and glorious nation of Georgia. Ah, uh, yes, Steve. Really? I would actually, I would love to see you as a Slavic man. Honestly, they're, they're not Slavic in Georgia, though. I'm not. I'm, I'm just. Know. I just thought. I just thought I'd explain. It there, could be next week's culture of the flavor of the week. You know, there, there could be that. Yeah. A little bit of a little bit of that. A little bit of that. A little bit of this. A little oh. bit of Monica. Lord, in my life. Lord <laughs> snobbery about to rob the podcast game. It's true. Also, remember how good Mambo Number no. Five was as a song. Oh my it, god! Remember when everybody thought all those girls were drugs? Wow. Um. Actually, this year. Uh, this summer, I was walking down a kind of major boulevard in Montreal, and this guy with a <laughs> with a, a Jeep Wrangler, okay, door the ones you know doors off everything, blasting Mambo Number no. Five like oh it fucking just God. came out. He was oh. killing it. Oh, I would have I would have joined him. I think. Oh, I mean, uh, I certainly uh, I gave a nod of approval. <laughs> drives by a ter- drives by a terrace. You just hear all the people hear mumbo number five. You just hear, you just hear one guy stop. It's Jerry Covey, and he stops. What the fuck is that? Uh, <laughs> without okay. wasting any, any more time, because we've already done that for the last two minutes. Or, or I mean, three seasons. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, we have a very special guest today that we'll talk about a bunch of topics with, um, including um, Bernie Sanders, probably, and uh, Bridgerton on Netflix, probably, mm. and a lot of other oh. things. Uh, but uh, without further ado, uh, please welcome uh, my good friend and a constant listener of the Snobcast, Jess Zion. Hey. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, Only taken what, like three, three, three seasons? It's nice. Three. I was thinking about that. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> back <laughs> of the bus. <laughs> right right yeah, before you came we... on, you're like these fucking guys. <laughs> <laughs> Because we weren't sure what you would bring. Yeah, no, I get it. It's like a constant audition all the time. That, and we also know that we don't bring much. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. We don't want you to bring more. The bar's set around here. Yeah. Mm. Well, as long as you hold your glass above that, you're good. I'll be fine. Yeah, Jess, what are you drinking today? I'm drinking a Moscow Mule in my fancy Moscow Mule cup. Oh, my God. I that's pretty awesome. Is that from Russia? Um, maybe. Probably. It's I probably not. It's probably coffee. like an American that invented it, and then they just slapped on some kind of ah vodka, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's cultural appropriation. It just it, probably it's, it's for the benefit of capitalism. So you know, we just keep it. Fine, I'll just call it a Griffin Town Mule. Fine. A Griffin. <laughs> yeah. How much do you hate it there? It's um, it's really, really bad. Like it's the worst place in Montreal. <laughs> Think of the worst place oh you can live. And I thought we we're talking bad. about Moscow. No. <laughs> no, no Moscow better. <laughs> why? Why is Griffin Probably. so bad? Yeah, yeah. It's like constant construction, and every bit of land is like, oh, I'm gonna put a condo up here. You know, it's like a bit of sidewalk, and they're like, okay, let's tear whatever shits down there and put up this condo. And uh, I'm pretty sure at one point, I hope I'm wrong about this, but the constant like vibration is gonna make one of the buildings collapse. Pretty sure. <laughs> it's good. It is if pretty you, you, you heard it here first. <laughs> if that does happen, you can guarantee that they'll make a blockbuster with a rock in it. Hopefully. Yes. Playing me? Hopefully. Playing oh. you. <laughs> because you guys have as much tattoos, probably. There's oh my prob- god. Probably, yeah. Do you get any sun in your in your condo and yeah, in tons. Your- oh, tons. Okay. And honestly, it angers me. Because <laughs> there's like I, I knew that was coming. I was just like, oh, and I hate it. There's I too much it. sun. And so you know when 
you know, you look at your floor and you're like, oh, I just washed it. And then the next day it's like this really, really beautiful day. And it's like, I gotta wash it again. I feel like that's a very Larry David comment. It's, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> the thing though, as I, but it's true. I, I understand completely where you're coming from. Yeah. Because like uh, whenever uh, people come to my place, I always say that it's dirty. And I know that it's dirty because I could see from the fucking sunshine. Yeah, yeah that's that, the thing. I passed the vacuum yesterday. All right. Yeah. Today I was lying down on the couch, fucking dust everywhere. Yeah, okay. Yeah. In in defense of dust, though, you <laughs> have, what, tell us, tell us about it. You yeah. have a dark floor. You're gonna see it. It's this. I'm never getting dark floors again no. in my life. No. That's the thing. You gotta get light color floors. Yeah, but not too light because if you get white, then it's no, even yeah, more disgusting. No, so you is, gotta find like the middle ground. You gotta get like you gotta get like a like a beige tone, a wood tone. Because yeah. the thing is, with white, the second you drop water, for why does why do water droplets turn into black stains? I don't know. That's a lot of shit yeah. in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like Matthew, everyone. It's all that fluoride in the water. <laughs> you know, especially if it's tap. Especially if it's tap, it's probably cancer. Probably so, uh, Liqu liquid cancer. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been drinking tap for the past twelve years. Good luck. Uh, that's why I'm so tired lately. Um, oh, wow. I don't know. I don't know. But honestly, I'm surprised you said there's a lot of sun because I thought you were going to say because there's so many fucking buildings. That no, no, because like we're right on the canal the and you would think that living on the canal is like a really great thing, but it's like living in the middle of a park. So there's always tools mm, right. gathered, screaming all kinds of things. And my favorite in the summer was like this guy who was obviously high on whatever doing some random EDM party with two people on the side of the canal. Oh my god, and they're fucking going at the tectonic yeah. shit. And yeah, fucking... it's, it's like that video with those goth people. It's that same kind oh. of thing. Oh, oh. that's yeah. an... Actually, you know what though? Like, low-key, that's like a vibe and I would oh, totally... Is. I would totally people watch that, you know what I mean? I uh, Yeah, I almost <laughs> went over and screamed at them though. Like, I was like... <laughs> We need to stop. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, it's, it's like go away. <laughs> you guys need to understand that Jess hates everyone, including us. Uh, uh, yeah, like varying degrees, but uh, yeah. I yeah, feel like him. Oh no, him most. <laughs> yeah, wow, it's mirrored. Yeah. I forgot. I'm go I didn't know. Least. Just uh, confidence. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. pretty a good uh, good thing there. Yeah, so I can I can just imagine like now like with the whole curfew, are do you see people outside walking after eight? No, but I look out and I'm like, if you, if you don't have a dog, I would never, I would never call the cops, but I'm just, you know. But you like to bitch about it. Like, I do. Them, you, know? you stick your head out the window, hey. There's some guy that has like a lightsaber. Outside. I was just going to mention. I saw that. That's yeah. amazing. I would, that, I would just let that happen all the time. Yeah, Someone explain, great. explain who has a lightsaber. So there's a, one of the condo like buildings just right next to ours. Yeah. This guy, yeah. I'm assuming is a kid, but. Who knows? He's probably um, not. No, probably not. And he just stands outside his balcony and like whips around a lightsaber. <laughs> before just, curfew or after curfew? Before curfew. Okay, so and that's his workout. It is his very workout. responsible. Very responsible. Yeah, but you know why he does that? You know why he does that outside? Because probably work. because he's broken so many things in the house with that thing. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> yeah. That his wife or mother must have been like, you take that shit outside because yeah. you can't do that in here anymore. You, but I think, like, I think we can agree that it's peak pandemic to go outside with a lightsaber in the middle of winter. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I think, mean, yeah. how are you gonna get a ticket for that? <laughs> what cop is gonna write a ticket saying he was outside playing with a lightsaber? Well, I don't know. If the cops are writing homeless people tickets, I think that they would find that's it. That's yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Again, oh. up. yeah, the cop might like take a video of it and be like, "Oh, look what I saw today on the job." You know? Also. Can we just, can we just, I just want to point something out on that because like, out, I, I, I heard about that whole thing on the news about the cops and, you know, the, the Legault doesn't want to, uh, to uh, say that, oh yeah, homeless people can't get tickets because then what if regular people say that they're homeless? Uh, sorry, sorry, Tom, to interrupt you. Just so you know, it's a, it's a an homeless. An homeless. <laughs> but like, <laughs> how? <laughs> Who's what you know, like I mean, I, it depends, I guess, what you're wearing. But, but like but what is that? What is that even? You could go into the plateau and you could think some of the homeless. people. Yeah, yeah, because you know, have you ever been to Mount Royal Metro? It's like hipster or homeless, not sure. Yeah. 
So, they could literally be sleeping on the metro floor, and they're a hipster. You don't know. It could yeah, be a new Snobcast segment: hipster or homeless. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, sorry. It could be hipster or gnomeless. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. The accent, yeah. How do you even write them a ticket? Well, it's just know. it's idiotic because it's one of these things where they're already like they're already struggling the most. What? How are they going to pay this ticket back? Yeah, and where, is, where does it go to? Don't you need an address to, to like have yeah. the info? I would assume, but you know, I don't. Like, I, I'm not really sure. I just think it's just yeah. it's stupid. Park bench, Nathan Ev. Yeah, Steve. Park <laughs> bench, <laughs> bench number two. <laughs> park, park bench two, <laughs> Park Maisonev. Uh, you were standing outside Barry Ucam Metro Station on the south side. All right, thank you, thank you so much. That would, uh, yeah, it's it's not it's idiotic. These are, these are fucked no. up times, and, and I they really. Uh, um, so far, Jess, I'm enjoying having you on the show, so this is nice. Yeah, uh, you know, YouTube, I'm gonna I'm gonna get there. Wow. Yeah, usually, <laughs> usually when we speak, I am less than thrilled. So that's good. Um, but hey, um, I was at your wedding in March. That's yes. the, literally the last thing I did uh, yeah. <laughs> before the world collapsed. We were, you know what? We were really lucky, eh? Because yeah. Yeah. it could have been a disaster. Yeah, and I remember, yeah, and I remember that, you know, the night yeah. after the wedding, we all went to like this brewery and we were all sitting together and we were all saying, oh, better disinfect our hands. Like some <laughs> idiots thinking, what the hell? It's not going to be a big deal. And then the whole world literally is shutting down and we're, yeah. you know, canceling, you know, a trip to California Everyone. and it ruined our trip to Disneyland. Uh, now <laughs> Disneyland is where people go get like tested. Exactly. Right? No, it's the vaccine, I think, now. Oh, the vaccine, right, yeah. yes. What do you so, mean? It's like a, it's like a drive-through kind of vaccine. It got promoted. It got California. Space. Yeah. Like a COVID vaccine. Yeah, like it's like a... Because they don't it's have a place, place where or... they do it. It's a place where they do it, though. Yeah, it's like oh, the Roger yeah. Stadium and oh, all those things. Okay, yeah. okay. They I thought, they I thought it was like, you need a... to get one to get in. No, you probably will. Probably, At yeah. one point, yeah, they're probably going to say you need to have this. Already halfway there, but... Yeah, Tom Tom got the vaccine. That's right, I saw that, yeah. Um, yes. When do you expect to get your second dose in three years? Uh, yeah, probably. Hopefully before I die, that would be yeah, good. great. Good. That would be great. Uh, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm just glad that I'll be I part love... of a class action lawsuit if it does happen. But I love that it was left up to interpretation. Like Pfizer was like, okay, it's 42 days. And the legal government's like, yeah, 90 days is fine or more. I thought it was I'm 21. I'm trying to be fine. I, no, I, think, it, it I, think, it's I think it's 42 uh, now, like that you can go up to 42. Listen, I literally have people at work that think that I got injected with nanotechnology. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Which is, which is honestly fantastic. I that, feel that like... my next question. Now. What has Bill Gates made you do yet? I don't know. It's not Bill Gates hasn't done anything. I just found out that my nipples now have quick charge for my phone, which is fantastic. I can literally, like, I just, I just, and it just, look, and it's just charging on my chest now. It's fucking wow. weird. So wow. what the hell was that flashing? Oh, it's the sensor. Look. But it was perfect. It was actually perfect. Yeah. It, <laughs> what if it's true now? Now I'm a bit worried. But Tom, do you have any like uh, what's the what's the whole deal? So you got the first shot, right? And like, what's yeah. the, do you have any side effects or anything? Or I, I honestly, the only thing I felt was like like every other shot you get, like I felt like a little bit sore for I don't know. I would say like twelve hours. Okay, that hours. wasn't from the masturbation. No, no, no. I'm a righty. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, apart from that, nothing. Uh, a friend of mine went and he f he said he felt like tired, but everybody else that I've spoken to hasn't had any. But then again, we're all tired. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. About it. yeah. But especially I now, mean, I don't know. I go to bed at like three a.m. every night, so. But it's a fucking operation, there, guys. Like, I went to I went to a hospital to get it done, like to another hospital. Oh, really? Not even your own hospital. You went to a different. They're hospital. building. They're building it in the auditorium. They're going to be doing it at the auto, the auditorium at the, at my hospital. Oh, but I, I went to the Institut de Santé Mentale, and yo, know, there, there was like a flood of fucking people getting it. Like you know, like you'd think like, oh, it's not going to be that many people. It was like an impressive amount of people getting it. I still think that if they could just get enough doses, they could do twenty four hours a day. Seven days a week and get oh, the yeah. show. Hundred uh, percent, okay. for sure, for sure. There's no problem with that. They have enough staff to do that, guaranteed. You think like so, like if this had happened like a, like like years ago, like in the fifties or the sixties, even the seventies, like like people would all be dead. No, but like you would get your vaccine shot, right? But like it would be like in a smoke-filled room of like you know. That's, right. That's a really fantastic segue. 
Yeah, yeah. everyone, everyone's just, <laughs> everyone's just smoking. You know, it's not even vaccine. Not even the fifties and sixties because mm. my dad told me when he, when he was working at the hospital, even like as as early as like well as late as like the nineties, the, yeah. the early nineties, doctors would go around with pipes smoking tobacco mm. and like well, go do their visits. Yeah, and the, in the seventies, my dad, the, their desks had ashtrays. Yeah, my dad was a chain yeah. smoker at work. Yeah, yeah, like but. But imagine you're getting oh you're getting this nice vaccine, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. No, you know what? I think there's a certain aesthetic to appreciate. Like you know when you're at a wedding and you used to like you're in the reception hall and you would go out into the kind of oh yeah space and it would just be like a, a haze. <laughs> like you know that that meant something back then. That's yeah. why everyone of that uh, generation has cancer. Um, yeah. And that's kind of true, <laughs> that's kind of... I feel like it's written on the packaging. <laughs> no, it wasn't written back then. It was just no, here. no, no, yeah, no, not yeah. back then. No, it was they used just to like... have commercials to tell you to smoke cigarettes. I mean, but well, but I, but I like you. Let's say you, your your dad, your all of our parents when they my were smoked. Yes, my dad smoked. Sorry, no, 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 no but like when they were when they were younger, they used to have like when they were kids and their families used to get together. It was a small room. There were like 30 people, 40 people, and everybody was smoking. You couldn't even see. You know see, what I mean? That, like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but it's like, it's also a very like Christmas, you know, like you gather with family at Christmas and they put all the coats on the, the bed, you know, like the, the single yeah. bed and like the smoke goes uh, toward and it smells like the the cigarette. Like you, gotta, like, you gotta burn your clothes after. Oh my God. That's the thing is smoking indoors too is just uh. so... Such a turnoff now. Also, what's really great is like you see people who smoke for like 40, 50 years and they have like beige walls. The the walls in their houses were white, yeah. but because they smoked so much, it's like a beige. Yeah, and their gray hair also has like also a yellow the mustache hair. Uh, the mustache, mustache, the yeah. mustache yeah. thing is the most disgusting. Thing yeah. Yeah. yeah, no. It has yeah. changed color. Yeah. Yellow. Whatever the whatever that overhang is onto the lip the lip oh, area, no. it's always there's always like and it's yellow and it fades as you get to the <laughs> side of the mustache. So you can tell like if they smoke to one side, you'll see it more on one side. And some of them, if they if they're like cigar smokers or whatever, and they really hold their stuff, their what their smoking uh, uh, finger apparatus, uh, oh. whatever whatever uh -huh. you're smoking. Whatever yeah. you're smoking, no, whatever yeah, you're smoking, smoking. <laughs> whatever you're actually smoking, your oh, okay, cigarette, yeah. your, your weed, your pipe, or whatever your your pipe, too close to your teeth, one tooth will just be blasted brown. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, but ima imagine being a dentist. Like, oh my god, oh. you can definitely oh. sell dentist thing. smoke too. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, while he was working, while he was working, all right, op I'm open your mouth for me. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna have to remove the tooth completely uh, <sighs> and put a cap. But yeah, but then the cap, whatever. Do you guys do you guys rem well I mean do you guys remember? Obviously remember we all you well, I don't remember we've, we've done it. Remember when you could smoke on terraces? Yeah, but you could smoke in restaurants, like when there was uh, smoking and non smoking sections. Yeah. Yes, that was the thing. And yeah, that was the thing. You would normally also have to go through the smoking section yeah. to get to the non-smoking section. How did that work in a restaurant where it was all open? Well, oh, well it was it was like uh, they tried. I'm glad you asked, Tom. I'm yeah. glad you asked. I remember, like, like, uh, like, like going to the restaurants and I don't know. Whenever this ended, was I think it was like 2000s, right? It was like 2000 something. Yeah, right? was yeah, late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But it was like we would go to the restaurants and they'd be like, "Oh, where do you want to sit, smoking or non-smoking?" And non-smoking would always be full. Uh, full. And so we'd have to wait, but then as you literally walk through the restaurant to get to the um, the, the non-smoking, it then you would sit there, and someone in the family would just be like, oh, "It still smells like smoke." Yeah, because the guy two tables down is smoking a fucking cigarette. Yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't like, a separate restaurant for no, smokers. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no. I love that. I love the attitude that it was usually moms that were like, yeah, oh, usually, I can yeah. still smell it. Or oh I can't, who's yeah. smoking? <laughs> like, oh my <laughs> God. That or I've been in situations where uh, you, you're in the restaurant and like the mom or whatever, the, the woman is like, oh, do you mind not blowing your smoke in my way? Oh. Thank you. That's the, that's the beginning of the Karen movement, I think. I believe so. The reason I bring up smoking in, in, in places because Jess and I had to talk about like how it's like, it would be so cool 
some in some scene in like some scenarios it would be cool to like still smoke in venues of like oh concerts. yeah concerts but yeah we, but we would smoke at concerts. as well we probably have to talk as well I but think. i don't think I it know. would be cool like at a bell center or something like that there's no. too many people but like a metropolis or a yeah or a corona or something like that that's i need a jazz club yeah, I mean, it's happened at every concert I've been to at the Bell Center. Yeah, yeah, but it's but it's people like four, smoked. but it's four people. Whereas if everyone's oh smoking, yeah, 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 it's kind of like the lighter thing, you yeah. know. Oh my people god, that's cell phones, fuck. Yeah, people don't hold out lighters, and uh, also what it burns at that? some point. It just burns your face. Like I always wondered, yeah. did somebody ever accidentally set someone's hair on fire at a show? For sure, probably. It was the seventies. Maybe, maybe, maybe in the eighties. I feel puffy hair. Oh. That's like a oh, fire hazard. For that's sure. a fire hazard. That's like <laughs> plus all the hairspray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! There's air. It's too many factors for like a flash fire. It definitely right. happened during like a Def Leppard concert or something. Guaranteed. Like, uh, or or poison. Or poison. <laughs> that's a good one. You know, the, like, thing, the, the thing that's interesting is that like, um, like at the Bell Center, like you smoke like either a joint or like something, and just you blow it in your shirt, but then it, the smoke still comes up. Um, oh my god! That, yeah, that's but it's my filtered. Today. It's filtered, so it's okay. It's filtered. <laughs> yes, it's filtered through my cotton shirt. Yeah. I, I remember going to, I think it was the second the second or th third album from Kings of Leon. Like they, they had got on tour but and I went I, I, I went with a bunch of friends and the the first the two rows in front of me and the two rows behind me, everybody was lighting up. It was just I was like, okay, like there the security has to come see this. Like <laughs> there was like a, just a cloud rising from a section and i'm like this is fucked up and then you look around and you're like okay it's happening literally everywhere but no, like, no, one, no one cares i mean no i mean oceaga it's oceaga is actually cool yeah but oceaga is the thing is it's, it's outside, outside. It's okay yeah. but they yeah, also they, they, but now that it's legal it's gonna it's even better i mean well I, it depends <laughs> who, it depends who the lineup is yeah, you know, yeah, I don't think that people are getting high at Advanced Joy concert. No, but well, I you'd think, be surprised. yeah, maybe, but they're all hipsters. Po point in case, True. point in case, I guess. Actually, this year for Foo Fighters would be actually pretty sick to. What, it would be sick what, if it happened. What apocalyptic thing is going to happen to keep Foo Fighters away this time? Because it's in Quebec City, it was like the rain and the thunderstorm, and then it's Oshiaga gets canceled. So it's you wonder why like, they don't come back? They're like, mm -hmm. fuck it, yeah. we hate it here. I we remember when we had the double header when we went to see them in Toronto, but they played in Ottawa the night before. Yeah. We could hear them from yeah. outside. That was yeah. That we was... we went to see them in Toronto like two years ago, and uh, they were playing Ottawa Blues Fest the night before. And we were in yeah. Ottawa for Dave Matthews Band. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, but like Foo Fighters was playing at the uh, at the Blues Fest that night, and we literally heard them from like miles and That's miles. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's but, that, um, was, that was cool. They were but yeah, imagine but outdoor venues for smoking is like amazing amazing yeah, yeah. it should just yeah. every concert should just be outside all the time yeah in point. the winter it's great it's great in the winter like right yeah. now like igloo fest honestly you know, had, had, had they done that though like maybe like two weeks ago it was warm yeah but yeah, yeah like non-pandemic yeah but obviously non-pandemic non but also up to two weeks ago steve and i were talking we went for a walk and like this is global warming like not today oh, yeah. it's like minus 30 but yeah, like but i think yeah it's As global warming. It yeah. snowed like in Malibu be... last night. Oh, oh you would know. Yeah, because it I... snowed in Malibu. It did. It did. Yeah. It's weird. Well, it's fucking weird. So, but we're fucked. Yeah, we are. Great. <laughs> I'm really glad we're all talking about how it's going to end. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good and uplifting stuff for people. The to... good, the good news yeah. is, Jai, you'll already be dead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you. you well, to... I hope this episode makes it out before it all yeah. happens. You know, like remember, what if there's a flash freeze like, tomorrow. But remember when the in 2012 they were saying, okay, it's going to be the end of the world. The Mayans yeah. had predicted that oh 2012 was the end of the world, and then people were like, okay, what's the last album you're going to listen to before you die? And low key, everyone was like, well, I better pick an album because what if? Did you pick an album? I did. I, listened, were, I, I think we worked we texted, at the beat. Yeah, and yeah. I listened to Eminem Curtain Call. <laughs> That's what my head space was, just so you know. <laughs> you were very dark. Wasn't I? Or just yeah. ang but you're always angry, but that's What's angry. It? That's angry. Was that was angry. Curtain call was like the like a greatest yeah. hit. Yeah, it was a greatest hit. Yeah, and it was fantastic. It's a, it it's was, one of the best yeah. songs. So it's a yeah. Great I think album. that was the last time I listened to it, honestly. <laughs> but I, I remember. Don't remember. I don't remember what I listened to. Did you? Do you remember? I don't remember. 
I think it was probably, a, a DMV album. Yeah. Can, can, I say, can I say one thing, though? Uh, go ahead, Steve. Because when all this was going on, I remember 2012. Oh, my God, the Mayan calendar, it ends. But I just want to like put out there like today so everyone knows the Mayan calendar doesn't end in 2012. Just a, like a a section. Like, you know how we have months and years and that? Like mm -hmm. one cycle, whatever they call it, ended, and, and now we're here. It goes like until the year past the year four thousand something. But also, the Mayans don't exist anymore at all. Also, also so. yeah. uh, well, <laughs> technically, I think it gets like whatever. There's people like oh blah blah blah. I don't know how it works in Mexico. Yeah, there's also a lot of people who think that the Mayans were aliens. Yes, yeah, so there's also a lot of people who are just full of shit. Yeah, so, of course. Know. And that was your hype man ethnic thought of the week. <laughs> <laughs> that Mayans um... maybe. <laughs> Foo Fighters came out with an album that year. That's what I was probably listening to. Wasting Light came out that year. Oh, Wasting Light. With, yeah. with, was it Run or Walk? Walk. Walk. Yeah. Walk. Thank you. Yeah. Well, they had a song called Run too. You. Fun. Yeah. Run. I run know. was yeah. last last album when we. That was the the, the single oh, yeah. when we went to the concert. Oh my god! But the world is so full of shit now. That's my problem. With <laughs> is it? It I, is, I don't know. It Guys, I kind of feel like the second the pandemic's over, everybody's gonna go out to restaurants. Everybody's gonna get out yeah. of their system. Yes. Like, everyone's gonna, everyone's first gonna of all, you're not gonna it. be able to get you're not gonna be able to get a, a reservation for two three months. Well, I, I was be. saying the same thing about concerts last night. Can you imagine wanting to go see uh, whatever show? Artists could charge like a million dollars, and people would mm. pay because they just want to go to a show. Yeah. Also, Thank God, I have tickets for Elton John. Yeah, uh, yeah, us too. I just don't know when it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, you know what's messed up? Like, what about artists? Like, they must be wanting to, like, you know, go on tour. They want to release music. And it's like, do you hoard some of these songs back? Do you, like, do you say, like, oh, you know what? I'm going to keep them. So this once people are allowed to go to concerts again, I'll release them to build some hype. Because if you release now and you can only go on tour for this album in, like, a year and a half. Well, I think, I think there are two things with that. One, you could... It gives fans the time to learn the new stuff. So yeah. that's cool for an artist. But the second thing is, I feel like if everybody holds on to everything, they're going to release everything at once. And then it becomes just like a shit show yeah. of here's all kinds of new music. Yeah, but also, gonna... I wish that artists would stop saying, oh, we're going to release the album. Like Weezer, like just release the damn album. Yeah, just release the album already. And they like, keep changing their minds. They're yeah. like, oh, we're going to do a metal album. But no, now it's like inspired by Radiohead. I'm like, what are you doing? I, oh, hate, I hate Radiohead. So I hope Thank so, you. So do I. Jesus so Christ. Oh, guys, they're not that bad. They I like, like two songs. Yeah, I, but I also, I, like it, I find like, that, is there anybody more pretentious than like, his name? <laughs> like, Tom York. Tom York. Like, what? I'm going to come to a show and I'm never, I'm going to play all, not even B sides, like, shit unreleased songs that no one knows and you're gonna like it like oh by the way here's creep <laughs> <laughs> well i mean oasis were assholes like that too no well no they put their no 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 ja, ja, relax i just said that to get you going it's fine. <laughs> now, now the rumor is that uh noel is reuniting oasis but without Liam. Oh, that's, so. that's a good that's a so it's essentially just Noel gallagher's high flying birds yeah yeah, Guys, but can we just get them all back together. I want to see a brawl on stage. Come on, yo, Liam is so down. <laughs> Liam is so down to get back, and I'm like, yeah, man, do it, bro. Like, well, yeah, because he has the good song. Hold on, the sun's going down. Wow. Some lighting. <laughs> okay. Where are you going, Tom? What? Leaving. Oh. oh, he left. He, Tom he's left. He's done. Tom's done. His salary ran out. Very, it's a very pretentious band, Radiohead. Um, I wanted like, some lighting. Relax. Right, you Would you say they're as pretentious as Coldplay? What? Wow. <laughs> okay, it's Steve. Cold you, play. It's just as Fuck pretentious. Cold play. Oh, I right. said it. I said it live on this podcast. Wow. Uh, easy, easy Fred Durst. Durst. What? Yeah, yeah, easy, Fred. easy Fred Durst. I would listen to Limp Biscuit until the day I die than list than rather listen to one Coldplay song. At least they'll have one fan. Oh, yeah, you and your brother, Steve. Um, it's just uh, <laughs> I'm dying on camera. I'm dying. <laughs> it's just turned to snuff. It's gonna dying. be wow. <laughs> okay, can you not make me laugh? While I'm already fucking dying. No, no, we're not. <sighs> I'll have a sip of my beer. Oh my god, so many, so many almost spit takes.
I uh, I don't know what other bands are pretentious as well, Jess. I feel like you you would weigh in on this. Yeah. Nirvana. Oh my god. Like, that, I, that was Nirvana. For me, Nirvana is the worst band, <laughs> and you know, Steve said you heard it here first. The only reason Nirvana is popular is because Kurt Cobain is dead. I'm telling oh. you that right now. I'm sorry they would not be popular, and we wouldn't have Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters. So just True. saying. Can I Foo Fighters is much better band. a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna do a little piggyback. Uh, of all the grunge bands, Alice in Chains. Oh, here we okay. go. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather slip my wrist. Then I'll, I'll, I'll get out. Fuck. Pearl Jam. Pro, the okay. Yeah. Or Soundgarden. And then, and then what? Oh, my God. Soundgarden over Alice in Chains. Give me a fucking break. Ooh. Whoa. Soundgarden. Are you serious? I thought you said Savage Garden. Oh, no, yes. No, Savage, Savage, Savage Garden over everyone, baby. That's Savage Garden over everyone. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, I want you, I want that was know. like the slow dance album for all of the uh, the high school dances. Oh, it was like 99. Oh, sorry. It was, but... nine, it was 99. 99. You know what else happened in 99? You didn't have dances in elementary school? No, no. I'm not like oh, okay. yelling at you. I'm saying no, the did. album was 99. I yeah, know. No, and now, and now you can get it at Value Village. It's true, oh. and I, I I probably own both of them. Like back oh, back. I definitely do, and I'm pretty sure I bought them with you at Value Village. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we should, find, we should find them on vinyl, honestly. Probably. You know what else came out in '99? Ja? Unreal Tournament. Smooth. Oh, Santana. Yeah. Santana. That was oh, a Rob, great summer. Rob Thomas, Matchbox Twenty. Come on. Oh yeah, for sure. I love for just sure. met Bob Thomas. Mm -hmm. Oh no, stop yes, it. Yes, he came to the station to do like a is he nice? Was, was he smooth? Nice guy. He was not smooth, but he oh. was he was uh yeah, he was really nice and I don't remember what he played, but oh he played three AM. It's Ooh. three AM I must be lonely. Yeah, that oh, exactly. man. But but Jess, you've met other people too. Like you've met pretty fucking. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've been Except lucky Marcus because Mumford, you, you haven't met Marcus. Oh Mumford. my god, that that Marcus Mumford thing. When I realized that people from the station had gone and met him, I wanted to kill myself. And you were and you were with me. I was, I was. <laughs> Wasn't it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was a good show. That was fun. We. Uh, That's probably yeah. the last time I saw you. No, you saw me no. at the wedding. Yeah, I know. I'm just okay. saying, like when it was <laughs> for, a sh for a show. Yeah. When it was fun. That's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, but no, you've met some pretty cool people, and I don't want to name drop anyone. But, we, but. but Tom, Tom did slide into a DM last night. I know he did. <laughs> but, uh, but I didn't get an answer. What, what the answer is going to? You know what the best thing would be is if it says red. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, wait, I, didn't, I didn't even check what is. No, no, it's definitely not like the guy has three million followers, but just uh, so on only stage. three million. You'd think he'd have more. <laughs> Jess uh, was on stage and met Paul McCartney. I did, and got her arm tattooed. Uh, well, signed. Signed and then tattooed. Yeah. Oh, I just uh, tried to go in vanish mode with Paul McCartney. What's that? Oh no! What? I don't know what that is. Like what next thing. Uh oh! It just did this. He's probably blocking your account. Okay, so we're gonna just not. I guess he's not gonna be on, guys. Sorry. Started the message. Oh Lord, McCartney or something like that. Oh, great uh, one. Oh, great one. Uh, I want to I want to talk about Paul McCartney a bit because uh, before I even knew Jess, um, I was at that show where Jess went on stage. Um, and uh, uh, what was it? 2010? 2010, yeah. Yeah, fuck. That's a long... That's 11 years ago. It is 11, yeah. Uh, that's nuts. <laughs> the, math, the math is good on that it one. Is. <laughs> no, no, I was thinking not. about it the other day because... It know, feels like, like yesterday. Yeah, well, it no, does. It's 10-ish kind of, years ago now. It's well, 11. It's going to be 11. Everyone. We're in our 11th year. There we go. <laughs> of our Lord. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that night, I was... Uh, my dad and I had never seen Paul McCartney. My, we had like a father-son moment. It was like super emotional, whatever. And then, and this, then I ruined it. Fucking big haired fucking girl screaming her name, Jessica. Yeah, thank you. Like, Thanks for bringing that up because I love that part of that whole thing. But, but, but tell us like, so literally, like, so Paul does this whole thing where like you know, people hold up signs or whatever, and yeah, and so and, and, and someone came to see you, they're like, oh, they want you to go on stage. Yeah, so I had this sign and it said, Paul, please sign my arm. I've already made an appointment for a tattoo, and I had already made an appointment. The guy at the tattoo parlor was like, yeah, okay, talk about and, manifest. 
Jesus. Yeah, and wow. he he literally looked at me like, yeah, sure, no problem. Sure. And then I left and whatever, and you know, I had to sign. And I didn't want to show anybody. I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't want to jinx it. And then uh, went to the show by myself, sat in the eleventh row on the floor, and then you know, I held the sign up, <clears throat> and he saw it, and he mentioned it like once. At one point, I have this great picture where it's him on the stage and he's standing with his arms like this and my poster's in, on the big screen and it's really cool. And, and he's like, yeah, 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 later, later. And then it ruined the show for me because I was like, well, you said later, so come on. Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was obsessing with, you can't say that to me and then not do it because I'm going like, to die. And then this guy who then I realized was not part of like the bell center team but was part of paul's team like comes to see me and he's like okay hold your sign up and i'm like okay and he says paul's gonna call you but you have to hold your sign up and i'm like okay so i did and then he says when he calls you follow me so paul says oh you, know, you really want to get this tattooed and i'm freaking out and when he says okay well come on what do i do i go the opposite direction uh -huh. because and then he looks at me like you fucking moron <laughs> and so i'm like okay so i run and I can't get over the barriers because, you know, there's like the barriers at the front yeah. and I can't get over. So I have to be like flung over by some security oh guard. You're probably like you. Why didn't you just go the other way? So I, you know, get up and it's the guys says to me, you know, you have a pen, do you have or a marker or whatever. You leave your sign here and you come back here when you're done. OK. And I was like, OK. And he just throws me onto the stage at the Bell Center. First of all, like all this information he's telling you, you're like, dude, do you know what the what the fuck is going on? Well, right I now? didn't. Like, I was like trying to process, and you're trying to make a coherent sentence, and yeah. really all you can, you're like shaking. And it's been yeah. 11 years, and I never, I never really tell this story. So when I do, I'm like, I can go right back. It's really cool. Oh so, God. I, you know, I I jump up up onto the stage, and I remember taking, I don't know four seconds to look at how many people were in the bell center because it's the only time you're going to get that vantage point yeah. like you're yeah. never ever going to get up there. how crazy is it and the lights were up like the house lights were up and i was like oh my god there's like mm -hmm. twenty thousand people yeah. in here yeah. so i you know I, I do that and fun fact celine dion and uh, renee were there that night Whoa. Wow. Really? I didn't know that. yeah and i always thought how cool would that be to say that to her I want, yeah, but like I'm this never. One day, so then if you're listening, well, so then if you're listening, I was there. Let's we come. we got close. We got close. So it's pretty cool because there were, you know, I don't know who else was in the the audience, but there were. Some did he people. sign your arm? So he did, yeah. So I, I, you know, went up and it was a bit of a an embarrassing conversation um, because yeah, I was so nervous, yeah, and I remember, you know, going up to him and. It's kind of like an outer outer body experience because yeah. you look at him and you're like, oh, here's this guy, and then when you when you realize who this guy actually is, you freak out. And I remember him, you know, he gave me a hug and he put his arm around me and he said, "Are you okay?" And I said, "Yeah." And he says, "Are you gonna be okay?" And I said, "Yeah." And he was like, "Okay." You know, Paul McCartney. You know, this random girl comes on the stage and then passes out. <laughs> you know, then, we have to, then it stops the show and they got to get like the ambulance. It's like too much drama. So he, but I do remember him holding me up because I was shaking so much that I thought I'm well, not going to pass like sensory out. sensory but... overload and you're freaking out in your head too. So yeah, it's like. And you know, I was looking out, like I remember the microphone and I remember looking out at the, the crowd and at one point he asked me a question and I turned my face and his face was right here. And I remember <laughs> going, oh, <laughs> Like, what is this? And so I, was, yeah, I was talking to him and I was like, answer the question. And then at the end, uh -huh. he go, I'm standing kind of further away from the mic and he goes, what's your name? And instead of staying where I was, I decided to lean into the mic and go, Jessica, like some, like I had never seen a microphone in my life or knew what it was, what it did. So he was just like, okay, yay. And he signed it. And then I, you know, I, I don't even remember. And the whole thing lasted, what, two minutes? Like, yeah. it wasn't a huge... It felt way longer, though. It felt yeah. super long, uh. and I still, rem like, remember that. And then, the, you know, I, it, was, it was so nuts because when I got off the stage, I was mobbed. Like, I didn't realize what I had done. And people yeah. were... And then, they, like, the Bell Center security, and there was, like, police officers, oh, and they were trying oh. to keep people away because people were 
crazy. Like they were like, <laughs> and they were like, you can look, but you can't touch and you can't. And they were pushing away. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. Like what, what's going to happen? And then there was all kinds of like, you know, uh, Journal de Montréal and the Gazette and all kinds of people like that. And I like played my own publicist because Journal de Montréal is like, well, we'll offer you the first three pages. And then I went back to the Gazette and I'm like, what do you give me? And they're like, oh, uh, arts, <laughs> arts and literature. And I'm like, yeah, no, no front page. No. Okay. <laughs> so I took the um, Wow. Amazing. <laughs> So, you know, and then it just kind of, there was a bit of a, an, an awkward moment where, you know, that's my 15 minutes of fame. That's it. That's yeah. all. I don't want anything else. And it was, you know, people stopping you in the street and people stopping you on the metro. And I, I was like, that's all, all I did was hold up a sign and he, he saw it and he brought me up, you know? So, but it was, it's cool. And this but, is where your hate of everyone came into play. No, it's much earlier than that. <laughs> but like, I, happened a long time ago. I can't even imagine what that would like. Ja, what would you do if like who I, El, you go to the Elton John concert and he's like he sees you and he's like get on stage, you know? Or yeah, I I don't know. I mean, there's certain artists that I think of that I'm like uh, that are idols to me that I maybe would not want to meet just because I like 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 Jess with Paul was super nice, right? Yeah, but there's you always run that risk of. Yes. them not being nice and yes. like <clears throat> Paul has this reputation for being very very nice and he is very nice yeah you know um you know I've, I've seen you know 34 McCartney shows and I oh you know, and, you know when I went, <laughs> I went on sort of like on tour in the Midwest a couple of years ago I followed him you know six shows in 10 or nine days and we you know I, I flew in to I don't remember where the hell I was going, but like we drove to like Oklahoma and this and all kinds of places, and we were just going around. And at one point, we got to be friends with some of the the band because like the guitarist and all that, right? Yeah. So Brian wow. and yeah, and, and they would come out with us sometimes, and it, it was kind of cool to wow. have that interaction. Like not not like hey, can you get us? backstage it was just kind of oh. like hey, whatever and we got to be friends or acquaintances with paul's videographer and there's this really if you've got nothing to do you can type in paul mccartney albany and there's like this video of me outside of the it's an official paul mccartney video oh, wow. and it's like me talking about uh the show and being there and it's it's just it's funny um but he charlie got to be like a, a an acquaintance where we could ask him things and sometimes he would you know uh, message us and say, hey, we need some footage for something. Can you, uh, you know, can you come and, uh, you know, hang out or, or whatever. So we would do that. And one night the band was going to the next venue and we were, we arrived late because of the, uh, there was like a, a thunderstorm or whatever. And it was raining like holy hell. And we went straight to the hotel room, not the bar. And we get a knock on the door and it's Charlie asking us, like what uh what's happening Wh why were you guys late and we're like oh well we just you know the rain and stuff like that and he's like okay good because the boss is worried and uh, we're like oh, Who who's boss and they're like he's like my boss and we're like okay thank you the, shut the, the, door. the boss like, what the hell is that so you know it's it's because you get used to and i think for paul too he gets used to seeing people in the That's crowd cool. and it's yeah. like you know, we, at one point, this girl that I, uh, you know, I'm friends with for, you know, through the Paul McCartney thing, we were sitting in the third row and he always tells the same stories night after night. So if you know them, you know, and we answered the question before he answered it and he looked at us like, shut up. And he was like, yeah, that's what it is. And we were like, okay. So we stopped talking, but <laughs> so it's, you know, it's a, it's a cool relationship. And I, it's a re relationship from a distance, obviously, but it's it's kind of cool. Yeah, no yeah. shit. Yeah, I'm going back to your question about like meeting idols and things like like you say, Elton John. I don't think I'd want to meet Elton just because yeah. he's he's a diva. Like, did I you know. ever see that that documentary? Yes, tantrums and shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Where yeah. he like berates the yeah. <laughs> like the thing is, like if you maybe if you met him like briefly, like to be like, hey, what's up? Like, can I just have a picture? Fine. But like, well, him, who would you want to meet? Who's the guy you'd want to meet? Honestly, Fred like, Durst. I sound like, hey, but, like Dave Matthews, apparently it's like super nice. Uh, like, uh, uh, fuck, I don't know. Who else would I want to meet? Uh, there's, there's people. 
Steve, Steve, Steve's, Steve's people, they're, they're gonna. He, he, if you want to meet Steve's idols, you gotta go to like Slovenia, Slovenia, or like. Slovenia. Uh, I, would want, I would want to meet uh, Celine Dion. Fuck, she, she's apparently really nice. Oh you my god, so that must be a hood and a half, though. Yeah. He would want to meet her like when she's here, because then she yeah. goes back into like her Quebec mode, yeah. and that's no. the best part of her. No, but also, Jess, I feel like if I met her, let's say in another. Uh, like oh, she would game. go full on. And I, would, yeah. and I would say, "Oh, I'm from Montreal. Ah, get out!" Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you come all the way here to see me. I get to watch too over there. What was that video? Remember? Uh, was it with Neo? Remember she had recorded that song? Oh, oh no. with Neo. Yeah. And she did. There was that like behind the scenes video where she's like yeah. full on Quebec. Uh, yeah, there's great behind the scenes shit of of Celine. Just like uh, rest in peace, Larry King. But like when she did the whole like her yes, the kayak, the kayak, like. <laughs> Everything like it always comes out and like oh my god, I don't want to like talk shit, but there was an interview when she came back home um, in 2019 uh, to do the bunch of shows that she's doing. There was an interview with the Gazette, and and uh, the dude I don't remember his name, but it's better that way. Uh, did an interview with with her, and he was literally just sitting there. She's all like oh, animated and like into it, and he's just like. Mm -hmm. I remember that interview. <coughs> and then, like, he's just going straight for questions, like, just qu and and she's being super playful and like having a good time, and like, I could just be like, dude, they weren't on the same wavelength. You're not on the same wavelength. Like, oh, if I was yeah, I think he's likely like sent there, and then yeah. like not a fan or whatever. Yeah. If you sent me, I would be, I would be so like, it's yeah, it makes you, it makes you kind of think of the David Guetta Larry King interview. Yes, like that. That's Jeff, like you have not seen that. I have, you, yeah. It's fantastic. It's, it's gold. It's ne two people <laughs> who don't. Yeah, I know. Never, I know. Huh, no, you can afford it, David. They they you know? don't know what the other is saying. The the other one's just like saying words and just like. Did uh, you ever see the uh, DJ Khaled one? There's no. a DJ Khaled and yeah. Larry King interview. No, no. Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> he talks about oh, what the hell is it? And he said, "How did you?" Put on all the weight or whatever. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. Okay, calm down. Larry King didn't give a fuck, and like, shout out to him. Uh, yeah, but also he didn't have to. No, he yeah, didn't. No, no. Like, just to show, like, what a figure he was in, like, the in like media. Like, Prince rarely gave TV interviews, and like, uh, he did like thirty-five minutes with Larry King, and like, and that was when Prince was like a symbol. Like, it wasn't even I'm. Prince. Oh yeah, that's right. Like, no, that's I'm right. a symbol. Like, uh, so. It was just uh, cool, but I mean, yeah, uh, that's an that's an amazing story. And every time you tell it, I get goosebumps. Like it's it's uh, it's fun to, to to tell, you know, because it a lot of it <clears throat> has led to, you know, me working in radio and yeah, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's fun to have that. Like when people say, "How did you come into radio?" It's yeah. a better it's a better story than most. It's like yeah, well, I enjoyed radio and uh, <laughs> I, I used to listen to it at night. And now <laughs> I'm used there. To <laughs> yeah, I, re I remember the next day after that show, like just plastic. Oh. You were on Q you were on Q ninety two. Uh, I remember that with like Aaron Rand and like yeah. all that stuff. Like it was like so. And then uh, fucking fast forward like two years later, I saw you. Like we both applied for the same. You're frozen. Ja, yeah. you're cutting. You're cutting. You're cutting off. And that's that. You know. Ja, you cut off. <laughs> I yeah. cut out, didn't I? Yeah. What did, what did we last year? Uh, I don't know. You just froze, and I was trying not to laugh at your face. <laughs> we said two, two years later. <laughs> Fast yeah. forward two years later, and uh, and I see Jess. We applied for the same job at the radio station, and uh, and I'm like, I don't want to go up to this girl because I know who she is, and I'm like super intimidated. And then, uh, but turns out, uh, all in all, you were just still a bitch. So. <laughs> 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 So, so I'm guessing she got it and not you. Well, no, we both got it. Oh, yeah. oh okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. I don't know. I don't know. Like that. Now, Larry King, you see, like, there's so many things I feel like that have happened in the last few days. Like, Larry King dying was a big thing. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a big thing. Like, thing. Yeah, but I, I think that now, because of the pandemic, everything's kind of like, eh. You're like, oh, yeah. he died. Yeah. Yeah, like your reactions are just not the same. Yeah, yeah. but 
you're also not surprised that he died from COVID. I feel like that's the thing. Like if, if oh, Larry King contracted it, so yeah, he contracted it. Yeah, but had yeah. Larry King gotten you know flattened by like uh, an eighteen wheeler, it would have been a bigger thing than yeah. Larry King dying of COVID. You know, yeah, maybe, but I still think it's you know, yeah. The the impact the the thing is people are people aren't going to remember him dying of COVID. They're going to remember the interviews that he did. exactly he died of COVID though because I didn't yeah know. I did yeah, yeah. yeah died of COVID oh, yeah. That yeah. it's 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 a whole thing about like people blowing things out of proportion, right? And I mean, it's just like, uh, uh you know, who got blown out of proportion in the last week? Bernie Sanders, my man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, can we all agree though that it's over? Like, the memes are over. Yo, I have a feed. No, no, it's last. over. It's over. There's, it's over. there's like 40 or 50 just Bernie Sanders pictures yeah, in a row. It, it's no, done now. I think like the no, shelf life was. Normally, Jeff, I would agree, but considering it's Bernie Sanders and how much he looks like Larry David, I'd give him another maybe week. You know what? SNL another next week. week better bring back Larry David and put <laughs> yeah. him in a chair for all, yeah. of, all of them. Honestly, yeah. they should just be together. Bernie and Larry should be together, yeah. and they should just be arguing. The whole <laughs> meme, I'd watch that. The whole oh, meme yeah. was bigger than the fucking like inauguration. Well, it's just because, you know, honestly, yeah. the, the, the you know when it first came out, it was like it looks like Bernie Sanders, like the inauguration was on his to do list, but it wasn't his only thing to do. Yeah. And Bernie Sanders looks like that all the time. Yeah. He looks like I'm stopping in for this. I'm gonna scream at you, and then I'm gonna leave and go do my groceries. Yeah. Like he doesn't. He doesn't really. He's not like that's not his main event ever. And they're yeah. making those sweatshirts with the with his. They're sold out. And I know I would love to own one to be honest. They're, but they're they're sold out, and he gave a hundred percent of the profits to a Vermont food bank or something. Yeah. So, you know, shout out to him to make you know for making. Something the, like that, but yeah. the girl that made the mittens actually got uh six thousand orders when but the meme came out, and she didn't do any of that. She didn't make any of them because she oh only made those God. for him. She's like, I don't have time. I have a family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah also, who wants to knit six thousand pairs of mittens? Also, like, what a Bernie Sanders way to do it. You know, like, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. I have a no. life. No. But, she, but I think she made the pattern available. Now people can like. Do that themselves. Yeah, knit their own. Like, fuck yourself. Do it yourself. Oh my god! So everybody's just gonna have like six well, thousand pairs you know, of half knitted gloves. Sell, she should just. It's sell like the, the bread. Pattern. She should sell the pattern. She yeah. become like a million. Yeah, Steve, you nailed it. It's like the first, the first week one of pandemic. 2020 <laughs> everybody was bread. baking fucking bread, bread recipes. Oh, how do you make? How do you, Tom? How do you make sourdough, Tom? How do you can you show me how to make a starter talk? Okay, let's be honest, me? making bread sucks. Okay, it's yes, just it like does. eight hours, and is and it it's really? gone in it's gone in five minutes. Yeah, I made you know I made cinnamon buns last week, and I don't have twelve hours that. to make cinnamon buns. Okay, it's because of the proof. Yeah, but I get it. But write that on the recipe. It's going to take fifteen hours of but your it life is. to make this. It, it's written on top. It says it preparation, say. preparation time, and then cooking time. It doesn't say. Hey. <laughs> I didn't say it. No. So I'm like, oh, it's okay. It takes like two or three hours, and then it's like, you know, rest yeah. for an hour, and then cover for another hour, and then bake for this, and then put it back on the. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Okay? Your visit. You're, you're older. You're actually you can measure like how much older you are at, also, at the end of the say, process. They should say, don't start this at 4 p.m. Do it at 8 a.m. so that you don't put the buns in the oven at quarter to midnight like <laughs> but did the house smell great that, that it, it smelled good it did but i didn't eat them at 12 15 i waited till the next morning so now it's, uh, it's wasted, wasted. The same. yeah it's yeah. wasted I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm really glad you got that out i'm sorry it's just it's very upsetting the thing, the thing too is that you put like oh, uh, time to eat approximately you Four seconds, you know, like just start a segment. Jess approved recipes, and you just stop them. Approved Jess approved fifteen I minutes. Jess approved the bullshit. Well, you know what? I think that my my next thing, you know, when we were in Vancouver for the wedding and things like that, we ate out at a couple of restaurants. And I'm gonna say something: Montreal food is, you know, the best in the world. Okay, it just is there. It, there's just yeah. something about it. And food around the rest of the country is garbage. And Vancouver has a particularly bad restaurant scene. Not just Vancouver. Oh. BC has a particularly bad restaurant scene. I didn't know that. And I'm gonna, like, I would want to roast all these restaurants. because. Did you go, did you go for Asian food? 
Asian food's delicious. Like, you know, the sushi and, you know, you can get all kinds of fusion, whatever. That's all really good. The problem is if you want to have like Greek food, forget it. Just forget it. I shit you not. We had something. We brought it, you know, where we were. Just take out and threw it in the garbage immediately because Greek people here would kill themselves if they <laughs> they would they would they would set fire to the food. It's disgusting. So I think I am. That's that's gonna be my next project. I could just picture oh, wow. a so Greek passionate. person, a, a Greek person facing it and going, George, Nick, Vula, get the ropes. Yeah, it's just like immediate, not happening. <laughs> that that's true though. I do find that. Uh, <laughs> The restaurant scenes are kind of outside of Montreal or don't have, bring the same yeah. uh, the, the same Flavor. energy, the same game. No, uh, but for it, real though. No, but just is it because like, oh, people Montreal. have settled? If, is it because, because people have settled for shit food? Because in Montreal, if you go to a restaurant and it's shit, you're gonna I, you're gonna send it back I and think, complain and never go back. I think it's because people from Montreal like keep a more of a connection to where they're from than other people. I feel like they go get stuff from their countries and will go through the trouble of bringing in the shit, whereas some, someone somewhere else, they're just like, oh, yeah, well, let me see what I could get, and I'll do whatever. I feel That's like what I think the big thing is. It's also, it's also like, I mean, you got to think in terms, too, of like when, you know, like when you go to Toronto, if you go, if you go eat out in Toronto, like all these places, all these restaurants, their, their rents are like through the fucking roof so if you're but, gonna like you got it and and in montreal too like the rents the rents are pretty expensive compared to other places but it's like i guess you got to think like if you're gonna open up a restaurant and you're gonna have to pay employees and you have to pay your rent and you have to pay all this all this shit well you better you open sure up a restaurant you, the food's gotta be good yeah you better good. be sure that your product is good because if not forget it and here people will just will run you into the ground yeah, yeah. like toronto has better restaurants now than they've had in the past but it's still it's not the not same. Real. You no. know, you know what I think it is too. I think that because in Quebec there's like this culture now that it's it's been picking up steam now, where it's they want Quebec products yep. by by local, and it really helps. Like people, like a lot of the the restaurants now, like buy from markets, buy from local like farms in the surrounding area, and I think that just that makes a difference than getting stuff that's imported or stuff that's grown in greenhouses that's not as you know, tasty. But you can also have produced. access here to imported products. Yeah, for that, sure. You know, I'm not going to buy, you know, Italian products at Metro. Like I yeah, have when you yeah. have all kinds of yeah. Italian you know, stores. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, but it makes but, like it'll make a difference if you go to like Super C to buy, you know, like a uh, tamap de side and if you go to Jean Talon market and buy a tomato. Yeah. You know, sure. like there's also a price difference. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Heirloom tomato, six dollars. Yeah. <laughs> but Jess, uh, quickly, just like yeah. tell us how much you love Bridgerton. Okay, so here's the thing. Bridgerton, what is that even? Okay, why people make this show? Like, you know, I'm a big the crowd I, I love. I never okay, so Bridgerton it. is like. First of all, I wanted to watch it because Julie Andrews narrates it. Okay, so okay. I'm like, okay, I, I love Strong Julie start. Andrews. Strong go. start. Yeah, but it's. Like, it takes place in the 1700s, and it's, I'm not really sure what it's about. It's kind of like this girl who has to find a husband, and she's, she looks like she's 13. She's probably 21. <laughs> um, but, and then she finds this guy, and he doesn't want to get married, and then they have to get married. It, it makes no, like, there's no storyline. It's just really boring. Uh -huh. And I'm convinced that this show was made for, oh. like, horny moms in their 40s Ooh, what a great market <laughs> yeah isn't it it's I'm a great sure. market especially now they can't get out i'm pretty sure that that's what it is they're like you know they're in the basement where the tv is and they're like this is mom time okay and they like shut the door because they want to watch this show <laughs> go back upstairs and play with your ipad <laughs> yeah it's just it's so bad the storytelling is really bad but now I'm four episodes in and I have to see how it ends. Unlike uh, the Queen Gambit, which I know you liked, but it was absolute trash. Okay, it was just a shit show. Like, just terrible. 
I'm Taylor so happy. She I'm so sucks. happy you're saying this now. I don't have to watch it. Okay, she I heard sucks. great things, so I want to know what, what you suck. like. Yes, she does. She does. Her character sucks. She's boring and she's whiny and she's like, you know, she she tries to be aloof all the time. Like, pick a lane, be someone, have a personality, and she doesn't have one. And then they're like, oh, it's not about chess. It's about her. It's all about chess. Okay, it's literally she she sits in her bed and she sees the chess pieces move on the ceiling. Okay, you know, have an Ativan well, and go to sense. sleep. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I can't, I, I just can't. And we got, you know, there are seven episodes or something. We got yeah. five episodes in after trying it three times, and we just can't. And also, I'm sorry, but the kid from Love Actually there, Thomas Sangster, he just looks like dirt, and I can't look. <laughs> <laughs> that's my review. <laughs> that's my review. I don't even know. Tune back next week for what's bothering Jess. You know what? <laughs> the new new segment. <laughs> uh, you should do wow. five I have, minutes. I have uh, lots of thoughts on lots of things. Yeah, but like on a po more positive note, we, we really both did enjoy uh, Pretend It's a City. Oh my god, Love the friendly docu docu series. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, what is that? I wanted to watch that. What's that? also? Can we just it's talk about the intense. fact that Martin Scorsese looks like he's gonna pass out every time she says something? Sorry, he, yes. He's yeah. laughing so much. I was like, okay, well, keep an eye out on him so he doesn't fall. I <laughs> just. Doesn't... I... I just remembered I watched an episode of that and I was stoned, so I couldn't my, remember what it was. My favorite line from the whole thing is when she's like, I have friends who have private planes. And she says, they've invited me on their private planes. And I look around at them and I'm like, why am I on this plane? If I had a private plane, you wouldn't be on it. And that's my favorite thing because I feel the same way. Yeah. You know, just, there's a lot yeah. of things she says that make a lot of sense. And am I going to become her as I get older? Yeah. Yeah, well, you're already there. You're yeah. already there. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. No, there isn't. It's going to be that wow. angry person who screams at people or leaves it's one star reviews on Amazon. It's That's fine. The thing. That's the thing, right? Like, they just like released a bunch of her like one star Amazon reviews. My favorite is about crayons. She reviews like Crayola crayons, and she's like, crayons are the tool. <laughs> Tools of children or idiots. <laughs> like no one, no one uses a crayon and then someone says, Wow, this is a worthwhile document for me to read. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. You know, wow. who uses that beyond the age of six? I'm sorry wow, yeah. if that's your so judging like, judging by the reaction that's all your tool of choice but. no yes. no like I, I don't i can't even remember like i didn't even know they still sold crayons i feel like kids just Look draw right with uh, yeah. apple pens iPads. now oh my god ipads yeah it's true but uh but let's time for our favorite segment of the week well not my favorite segment of the week but, uh, <laughs> but some people's favorite segment. some people's <laughs> favorite some, some people would say the dutch love it yes it's true <laughs> and uh it's time for the uh hype man's ethnic song of the week Hold on, I wasn't ready for that. Oh, you were ready. So I wasn't uh, ready. Um, now I'm ready. <laughs> oh, it's time <laughs> for the hype man's ethnic song of the week. Uh, we're already. You're still, still have it here. Hold on, I have it it's here. <laughs> Where right. is it? Uh, Jamie, can you pull that up? <laughs> this is not gonna happen. No, that's David Guetta. Where is it? <laughs> Where is it, Steve? It's I'm, not here. I don't know. Hurry it's up. Called, like, ethnic fucking song of the week. You hurry up. Jess has to go make cinnamon buns. Oh, here. The Hype Man's Ethnic Song of the Week. <laughs> what do you got, Preston? I'm week? so sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. So this week, uh, I chose... Actually, this is a pretty classic song. I think anybody who listens to this episode will know it. They've heard it somewhere. They've heard it out. They've heard it on the movie. They've heard it on TV somewhere. Uh, I chose it because recently, well, recently on um, Friday, uh, me and Johnny watched the recently released White Tiger, which I fucking loved and recommend everybody see it. Uh, Jess, you should watch it and let us know if you liked it or if you hated it. Oh my God. Let us know. Let Can't us wait. Know. What's yeah. White Tiger? And, what is so it's about, uh, it, it's a big kind of thing on, on uh, Indian society, the whole case system and how it's basically designed for some people to be servants you know and practically slaves in the master class which still goes on to this day oh. and uh the song that i have here it's mundian tobake uh but you might but you all know the artist punjabi mc and here's how i go and the movie actually starts with this song <laughs> Oh, my 
Fun the fact, that's the song that played at our wedding. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> well, yeah. That's the song you guys came in on. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Slave music. Jay-Z does do a kind of like rap onto it. So, I mean, it's it's kind of a song. Everyone's heard one version of it or another. Uh, there we go. Um, way, to, way to capitalize on slavery, huh? Mm. Uh, well, my favorite, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, what it's about. So, what the song is actually called is Beware of the Boys. And this whole thing is about how this uh, this girl basically, you know, I guess became a woman or whatever. And he's telling her throughout the song that, uh, you know, he, another one. <laughs> what, what, he's, what, he's telling, what he's telling her is basically, uh, you know, uh, people are they're gonna they're starting to look at you. They're being aware of you know how hot you are. So basically, uh, kind of watch out for the boys. Enjoy your time still as a as a as a girl and. Uh, Enjoy your youth because you know you'll get to that eventually. But hide, hide from the voice. Beware of them. I really think you should be a professional lyric interpreter. <laughs> no, I, I just see ethnic lyrical. Yeah, you, you have to what see could, what you do. I, I, the ones with well, the I song. Rely, I have to rely on like a a translated. Yeah, version yeah, for sure. That's thirty solace. The point. <laughs> I do what I can. The best is when there is no translation, and we yeah. have, and like he's like, I'm like Steve, so. Or you know we're like, we're trying to figure out what it's about, and he's like, "Well, what I think is," and it just <laughs> it just goes off on it. <laughs> Look, sometimes you have to go on the music video. Sometimes you have to go on just how they sing it. Do just feeling happy. How is how's the the music in the back? Is it is yeah. it sorrowful? It usually is. If something bad is always happening. It's like it's like an emotional response. To it, this it, yeah, nice. yeah, exactly, and then you know it it projects oh, even without so, words it projects. So once again, the title and the um, artist, por favor. So it's Mundian Tubake by Punjabi MC. Wow, it's such a beware mouthful. of the boys, Jess. Beware of the boys. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> This was fun, considering. It was. Yeah. Uh, it was. Considering I came what? in with very low expectations. And oh. expectations are still low, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I'm sure they'll be lower once you go make more cinnamon buns. We're not. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's not happening. <laughs> Just buy them. I gave it one solid try. Well, you know, my sister said to me, she said, why do you think people don't have cinnamon buns in pastry shops? Because they don't want to do them. And so she's a pastry chef, right? Well, she she worked in uh, yeah. Well, now she's a professional mom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the best the best compromise you could do probably is just make like the equivalent of that, but as pancakes. Or wait, 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 you know what? Buy people free things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That? No, I, I you know I love to cook and I love to bake, yeah. but this uh, this was uh, too much of my time. And by the time you get to the end of it, do you really want them? Not really. I, I guess, guess not. Yeah. I guess not. But I mean, probably what? ate by then. Yeah. <laughs> you probably filled up on other shit by yes. the time you got to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you probably went and buy some, <laughs> ate them, and then you're like, fuck it, these will be for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was fun. Uh, if you want to follow uh, Jess and her, um, sh I feel like she's also a snob, so you can. You Pretty can much. Me. Yeah, I think I've. You can uh, follow her um, at Maca Jess. That's M A C C A Jess yes. on Instagram. Yes. If not friend her on Facebook. She will tell you to go fuck yourself. I will. Yeah. I, oh man, can I try? <laughs> you can. Do it, okay. Do it. You know, I, 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 have I have this it. thing. I have this thing on Facebook where it's the friend request graveyard, and yeah, if you think people are ever going to get out of there, it's like it's worse than the friend zone. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, oh, okay. it's literally. It's like you have this friend request, and I'm like, yeah. Okay. And you don't even do okay. delete. You just leave it there. Yeah, yeah we'll let it. I leave it there because if you delete, it shows people that you had enough care. Yeah. You press delete. But if you leave it there, did you see it? Did you not see it? Who knows? And then if you go back and you deleted it, you can still ask for the friend request. Exactly. Again. That's the equivalent to driving on the highway and shooting animals. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just leaving them there. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. the pop, 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 whatever. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck you, caribou. You can follow. You can follow uh, <laughs> fuck you, caribou. Wow. <laughs> you could follow, follow Chef Starbucks. Here's the title of your episode. That's, yeah, <laughs> <terrible>. <laughs>
Um, it's that's nuts. But thanks for to keep interrupting me. I keep trying to you know introduce Tom here, but uh, Steve's an asshole. So um, you can follow Chef. What were you Tom trying to say? Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, your internet's <laughs> lagging. Uh, you can follow I'm Chef Tom at Chef Thomas Di Donato. And uh, pasta. Do 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 no, nah, you can do oh. it. Yeah. You can follow Hype Man Steve at Pasta. You can follow me at. <laughs> and you can follow Snob Media for all snobberies and stuff. Uh, Jess, this was a lot of fun. It was. Uh, Thank you, guys. I hope you'll come back uh, maybe in like uh, three or four oh, years. That'd probably. Be great. Yes, he's, by, he's by the by the time your cinnamon bun settle, you should be uh, good to come yeah. back home. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> Finish. But, uh, what's the show? Queen's Gambit or Bridget? Yeah, Gambit. Bridget, Bridget. Bridget. I'll, let, I'll let you know how it uh, how it goes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, that concludes another episode of uh, Snobcast. We'll be back next week, uh, hopefully, for another episode with another guest and more fun. Talk to you later. Dun, 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 dun.